the time. Oh, hello everyone. Um, welcome to my presentation. This I'm Rosa Whelan, and this is my portfolio. So a little bit about me. Um, I am standing up here, so I do have a major in creative technologies, and I also have a minor in entrepreneurship. I came into Barry as a CR teenager because I didn't really have an option after I took the tour of the lab. And then in my third year here, I stumbled upon my passion for web development and design. And then just fun fact, I love CSGO. It's my favorite game. I play it every night. And if you want to send me free stuff on it, you can. Um, anyway, here we go. <laughs> the theme of my presentation, uh, not my presentation, my portfolio is developing novel user interfaces for web-based applications. And to support this theme, we're going to be talking about three projects. The first project we're going to talk about is OpenCV Drawing App, which is a drawing application that uses Python and Computer Vision. And then we'll discuss Spot Checker, which is a research project that studies program habits. And then we will go into No Eye for Design, which is a website that is meant to teach you user interface and user experience design in the worst way possible. So, jumping right in, OpenCV Drawing App. It's basically Microsoft Paint, but instead of controlling it with a computer mouse, you control it with your hands. So fun. Um, this is possible by using OpenCV, which is a library uh, for real-time computer vision. And computer, oh, <laughs> computer vision is a field of artificial intelligence that enables a computer to see, identify, and process images or videos, uh, just like human vision, and then provide an appropriate output. So my application uses OpenCV and a webcam to detect your hand, as shown in the oh, in this GIF. <laughs> and there's my hand is mapped with a bunch of these little red dots, which I'm going to refer to as nodes. So a really simple explanation of how this works is that let's say there's a node in the center of my palm, and then there's a node at the tip of my fingers. If my hand is in front of the web camera using OpenCV, it can detect that my hand is open because of the location of the nodes. However, if I were to close my hand, the nodes of my fingers have now gone below the node in my palm. Therefore, the computer is able to recognize that my hand is closed and would execute a block of code. And that is exactly how this application works. So here are the different functions and screens that I created for this little game. I did draw all of the graphics and buttons. If you want to commission me, I'm really good. You can see my existing work. It's awesome. Uh, so this project uh, was really great. Oh. It allowed me to experiment with different ways to do user interfaces, and it, it introduced me to a new technology with computer vision, which I am planning to make more projects with because I love AI. So the next project we're going to talk about is Spot Checker. And this was a research project that studied parking habits, but it specifically studied the parking habits of people who parked in a singular 30-minute spot behind the McAllister building. And Barry, as most college campuses, has a problem with parking. Um, where during active school hours, it's kind of difficult to get a spot to go to class and make it on time. So just like this semester, I got a ticket for parking in a faculty spot because I had to go to my geology class and there were no spots available for students in the McAllister Lab. So yeah. back in 2021, I researched this, how these time limited spots were actually being used because I know I never parked there for less than 30 minutes. Um, I did this by using an ultrasonic range finder, which is here. A beautiful little graphic, which is a distance sensor that measures how far an object is in front of it, and my ESP32 to send, which can connect to Wi Fi to send data wirelessly. <laughs> Using these technologies together, I, uh, I had the sensor, oh, sorry. Oh. Okay. Using these technologies together, I had the distance sensor measure if and how far a car was in front of it every two and a half minutes over the course of seven days. And then the data reading would be sent to a database from the ESP32. So this was actually the project that got me into web development because I had to develop a website to showcase the findings and the research that I did for this project. So I developed a website with HTML, which is a hypertext markup language, Bootstrap, which is a very popular CSS framework for develop developing front-end applications, and MySQL, which is a database management. Anyway, this website, you can't go on, unfortunately. Um, it, was it was hosted locally here, and it's since then been removed. But if you want to check out the web pages, you can go to my Behance at Elena Wheel. So this is a screen grab of the raw data. Um, it's kind of a bother to look at, it's, but you can notice a, a few things. When a line goes down and then back up, you know that's when somebody was in spot. Sunday is a little funny because they were actually filming a movie in the parking lot. So this is just 
a bunch of people walking in front of my sensor and then placing objects. So for the findings of this project, Sunday was excluded. You can notice, though, there's these really large dips throughout the graph that show when somebody was in spot for way too long, to the point where on Thursday, somebody just decided to park there overnight for some unknown reason. Um, for the average person, this is kind of difficult to understand and interpret. And if I were to go like take this, go to campus security, and then just show it to them, I'm pretty sure they would just look at me and be confused, which makes a lot of sense. So what I did was I took, I went through and I developed significant questions that I thought would be a lot more helpful for people to understand the issue with the, these parking spots. Um, and I created web pages to display the revamped data in a more user-friendly way. So some of the questions that I came up with was how often was the spot used in a day? What days were the most what days were the most prevalent with the spot use? And then my favorite question, and I think that helps everybody understand the problem is like how long were people actually parking there in those spots? Well, according to the data, over 50% of the people that parked in these parking spots stayed over the 30 minute limit. And what this means is that the 30 minute spots behind the Callister building are not being used as intended over half the time. And the the funniest part about this to me is that, um, after doing further research into this data and figuring out when these people were parking, the 40% here that actually parked here for the correct amount of time were using the spots long after active class hours, which I do like to classify as 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, so they were using the spot at around like 6 or 8 p.m. for the correct amount of time. <laughs> this was a really fun project to do and a really interesting problem to research because I know everybody has that problem. It's like, where's the parking spot? I'm trying to go to class. What am I supposed to do? Skip? <laughs> yeah. And then because I enjoyed developing this website so much, it brings us to no I for design. I loved the process of developing websites, so I wanted to continue furthering my skills and talents with it. And one thing I know that is really important for almost every single web developer known to man to know is JavaScript. And I didn't know any JavaScript before this semester. So I wanted to develop a website, learn JavaScript, and still have fun. So for my senior exit hackathon project, I created No I for Design, which is a website that teaches you user experience and user interface laws, design principles without following any any of them. <laughs> so um, one of the laws that I broke is called Miller's Law. And it's, it says that you can only keep around seven items in your working memory at a time. So if somebody's trying to use my site to teach themselves about user experience, and they want to know what even that means on, oh wait, let's give it a second, let me go back. On the top here, that's the definition for the user experience. It's going to be difficult for somebody to read that, let alone, let alone try to memorize it while this is going on. <laughs> and then this button right here is the exit page button. And that button breaks the Fitz fit law, which states that touch targets should be placed in areas of an interface that allow to be easily accessed. But like maybe I follow that rule and law with my navigation bar being in the center, and so it's the first thing you see, pretty easily acquired. But that button over there, actually disappears when your mouse hovers over it. So <laughs> if you want to exit the page, you have to spam click in that area and really, really hope and pray that the click registers and then you can escape this. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you can actually go visit this website yourself on my GitHub at Rosasaur. Um, it, I don't, oh, but beware. I don't know what it looks like on a phone or an iPad or like smaller screens because I did not write I did not write media queries for this site so it's probably horrendous. Um, but I this was probably my favorite hackathon project that I created. I really enjoyed it and it made me feel confident in my HTML and CSS skills, which I would say I'm at an intermediate level now. So yeah, um, and it successfully introduced me to JavaScript. And so that brings us to the capstone project. You know, what the hell have I been doing for the past three months? <laughs> well, back in fall of 2022, I created a business called Studio XR that sold laser cut acrylic earrings. And I created two collections of earring designs and I sold them at Mountain Day. And I did pretty well financially. And after the semester ended, I didn't really want to stop the small business. You know, I wanted to keep going. But Studio XR has a problem. 
which is my business has limited access to customers because I've only sold in person at seasonal markets here at Bear College. And after I graduate, I'm going back to Florida. So I'm not gonna be here anymore. Um, to fix that, my capstone project comes in. You know, the objective of my capstone project is to develop an e-commerce website to reach a new consumer base, uh, establish a better consumer experience and build an online presence. So that's what I did. But this project does not, it's not only that. You know, I also have to create a new spring collection, then I need to manufacture these earrings and actually sell at the market. So I present to you Studio XR Online. Moving my business online with a new earring collection on the e-commerce website. But we have to start at the beginning. The spring collection. So. <laughs> I researched spring theme designs and I chose a bunch that I really enjoyed looking at and I thought other people would enjoy. And then I gave it to a group of people and I had them write them from their favorite to least favorite. And I used their feedback to make the final decision to choose what designs I would actually include. These photos show the prototypes that I went through in the design process where I experiment with, experimented with different sizes and shapes and styles. And then I also purchased a bunch more colors of acrylic to expand abilities and I put my existing collections on an Etsy store while I was developing the website. Mm -hmm. And after a bunch of design iteration, we have the spring collection, which I did sell already at the spring market. I don't know if you guys know, but it doesn't happen. It's too late. I'm sorry. Um, I also did make an order of business cards to hand out. And that's just a picture of me manufacturing five to 10 pairs of each of these. Yeah, but I did do pretty well at the spring market. I charged uh, $15 a piece and I made around $500. Yeah, but my favorite part of the whole capstone project process was the web development and design. I did a ton of research where I went, spent so much time clicking through jewelry websites. I'm pretty sure at my Google ads are now like, they're trying to sell me jewelry where it's like, I'm not trying to buy jewelry. I'm trying to sell jewelry myself. <laughs> so I, I made note of a bunch of things that I liked and that I disliked about certain layouts. And then I did some branding where I found specific fonts and colors that I wanted to use for Studio X to represent Studio XR. And then I had to turn this wireframe into a functional website. And I did that by using React, Next.js and Sanity CNS. These are all JavaScript frameworks and libraries that help anyone rapidly develop functional websites. And React is a JavaScript, li 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 Java <laughs> a JavaScript library used for making user interfaces, and Next.js is a framework to make these user interfaces that you created with React, a web application, and then Sanity is a headless content management system that I use to like show images and text. And so here is a short GIF of me going through a few of the web pages of my website. If you want to visit it, it's studioxr.dev. And then it goes through the process of purchasing a product. And yes, you can safely and securely purchase products off of this website with the integration of Stripe Checkout. Yeah, so if you know your credit card information gets stolen, that's not on me, that's on Stripe. <laughs> uh, the development portion of this product project definitely took the longest amount of time and a lot of dedication because I had to teach myself about all these technologies and JavaScript as I only started learning them in March. And I'm really proud of myself for completing this website and I am looking forward to making a bunch more websites in the future, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So as, <laughs> I don't know if it's obvious already, but I am going into the web development industry. And I, after I graduate, I plan on going home to Florida, you know, dig, taking a swim at the pool, maybe going to the beach, and then making a portfolio for myself using the same frameworks that I made for Studio XR. And then I'm gonna make this portfolio one for fun, two to build my skills even further, and then three, sell myself, because I would like a job. <laughs> I actually had a job offer, but I declined. It was a, I don't know, it was a decision. But the company didn't really match my career goals. For example, um, they had a lot of compelled social activity, which interfered with, you know, my me time, which I would kind of want to put towards my hobbies. Like I said, I would like video games, which kind of take a lot of my time. Um, you know, I've got to block out like 30% of my life for that. Um, yeah. 
they didn't really respect that and they wouldn't they weren't also weren't willing to pay for overtime work and when i asked an employee there they had like 20 hours of overtime on average as i like, i'm not working for free <laughs> but yeah i'm 